Hello and welcome. This video is for um, showing you guys how to do a CMA or a comparative market analysis uh, for a potential seller of yours. Or on the flip side of that, uh, you can also look at this video as a comparable poll or a comp poll for your prospective buyers. So when you're out looking with buyers, uh, you find a house they want to make an offer on, not 100% sure what to make an offer at, not 100% sure where the listing price fell as far as you know what an possible appraisal would fall into. Um, all of these same uh, parameters work for both. You're going to hear me more heavily dive into the CMA portion of it just because a simple comp poll for your buyer is, is very simple. It's, it's, it's not too detailed. You just get quick, down and dirty. You just want to make sure you're in the ballpark and, um, and then the appraisal will kick in. As far as you know, pricing the home for uh, 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 as far as pricing a home to sell, uh, you dive in a little bit further. So, video can be used for both. Um, take it with what you will. This video is for Iris, the Loveland MLS. So we're gonna log in and then go to search, listing search. Now there are multiple different ways to. Uh, do a CMA uh, through these different systems. This is just one way that I've found to uh, be most time effective. If you do find a different way, please reach out. Uh, my name is Bruce Carley. I'm happy to learn all new tricks and tips, um, just like I'm going to show you here with what I've learned over the years. So um, for the purpose of this video, we're just going to be doing a regular single family detached home. Um, I'm going to kind of make up some of this as I go as far as the subject property. Uh, but what we're going to be looking for are detached homes. In Iris, they automatically have this secondary listing type selected. Um, I only want to search for residential detached. I don't want to search for things that could be classified as both detached and attached or things that could be classified as detached and, you know, vacant land with like spec home builds on it. Um, so I get rid of that every time I go into the system. Now, as far as a comparable market search, we're, we're looking to see where you would list the home as far as what has already sold. But if you're listing the home, you also want to know your competition. So I always look at actives. I look at things that are under contract and pending. And then obviously sold. Um, listing date is what I use. I do know some people that use the off market date. I like the listing date. Now, appraisers are able to go back six months. Um, I, I encourage you to try maybe three to four months back first to see if you can't pull the most relevant information. So appraisers are going to be more keen on using um, recently sold properties if they match the criteria of the subject properties than they will be using something that's six that's that's on the latter side of things uh, six months out. So first and foremost, I'd like to go maybe a couple months back. So today is April 27th, 2020. March be one. We're going to go all the way back to January. Again, this is the listing date. So three months back would have been January 27th. Let's go January 1st because this is when things have listed and maybe not have, maybe not quite have sold. I also sometimes, uh, depending upon my mood, we'll go back just to, to December right here. Again, as long as you're within that six month window, you should be fine. But I'm looking for relevant information. Because we're, we're coming up with a price, you're going to leave price blank. I know that sounds kind of different. Uh, there's a lot of people that start these CMAs and will like to type in a little bit of a range. You're constricting the system. You're, you're really manipulating your stats when you pull up what the home is truly worth if you put in a price range because, again, that's what you're looking for. Uh, if it has no HOA, go ahead and pop that in there. I would say there's a balance between too much criteria and too little criteria, but that's that's what the beaut that's what the beautiful thing about what I want to show you today is with this with the CMA is you can you can edit you can change if you go too strict on your criteria pull it back a little bit if you go too loose or too lax on your criteria you just you have a hundred different you know uh, uh, sold properties uh, dive in a little further add some more things to it. Um, so you can add HOA. I tend to leave that one for later if I if I need to narrow it down. Bedrooms and bathrooms. Um, I don't think there's any written rule around this, but what I have seen, uh, traditionally speaking, is there is a decent difference in the weight behind bedrooms when you go from a three-bedroom house to a four-bedroom house. 
but not so much value difference when you go from a four bedroom to a five bedroom. So I again, I like to try and get specific on some areas and pretty loose on others, depending upon my experience. So there you go. I just gave you some of my experience. If it's a three bedroom house, see if you can't find three comparable properties with three bedrooms. If you need to expand, go out and expand. So three bedroom minimum, three bath minimum. Now let's talk about bathrooms. Um, in our system, we use whole numbers. So a two bed, two bath minimum could pull just a, a full bath as well as a half bath. So depending upon what you're looking for, um, you can use some variables with this one here. I like to search between two and three on a property that is maybe a three bed, two bath, uh, because you could have two full baths and maybe a half bath, which may or may not count in value for, for too much. Total square foot. This is where you, you, you definitely want to understand what you're looking at and, and um, understand what you're valuing. Total square foot uh, can be relevant. All of this can be relevant, but total square foot can be relevant, but be, be careful. If you have a huge, let's call it a 2,000 square foot ranch with a 2,000 square foot unfinished basement, you're going to be looking around the 4,000 you know, total square foot, but half of that's unfinished, which has a major value difference. So for me, when I, liked, when I start, I go with uh, your, your, your square foot with the, the basement. So finished with basement square foot. Uh, for the purpose of this video, uh, let's say our subject property has 2,000 finished square feet. Um, I my rule of thumb is go about 300 square foot, three to two to 300 square foot around um, around that. So for your base, if we're at 2,000, I'd be typing in 1,700. And for the top end, we we're going to look at 2,300 square foot. It's about all I use right there. Uh, lot size, acreage, unless you're having an issue or unless it's an acreage property, I leave that blank for now. Garage space is important. Um, a very, very brief general rule of thumb is that each garage bay is worth right around $10,000 in an appraised uh, value. So if you have a two car garage, the the uh, the appraiser may put a weight of about twenty grand on that garage. Um, and again, with three, it's about thirty thousand. So um, we're going to keep this simple. It's a three bed, or it's a three bed, two bath, two car garage home. So we're going to search just that two bed, two car garage, two car max, and we'll we'll begin to to dive in and see if we can't or see if we need to tweak these numbers at all. The rest I pretty much leave blank from there. If I'm looking to comp out something that's um, brand new, you can remove resale. Uh, but for the purposes of this and for the purposes of what you're going to be doing, you're, you're typically going to be doing a, a CMA on something that might be a little older. So let's say our property was built in the 1990s. Um, what I like to do is I like to try and figure out an era. So maybe that's 10 years. So maybe it's. Um, 1980 on one end and 2000 on the other end. As you get to know this industry, you're going to start to know the different cities and the different towns and the different regions that had these building booms. Um, so let's pretend our subject property uh, is built within, uh, let's call it 1990. Let's go ahead and pop in 1980 here up to uh, 2000. And that's primarily what I use on this side of things here. Going into the features, I do like to exclude manufacturer, mobile, and modular, and pretty much leave the rest of this blank unless it has any sort of special features. And just for the sake of this video, I know there's a pocket of homes that were built in the 80s and 90s over here. So let's say our subject property lands somewhere in this region here. What at first I'm going to look at is how far out a mile radius is. So appraisers try and use a mile radius to start. And just like the date of when it was sold, they like to find things within 
the area that the subject house is in. So they very well may not go out a full mile, even if you have the perfect property a mile away. If they can find three very similar properties within the within the same street, that's what they're going to use. So first, just for reference, I like to get a mile radius kind of point in my head. So there is one whole mile right there. And what you can see is that it kind of includes um, what I would call some major um, some major streets or some major roads coming through town. So the roads in yellow uh, tend to be a little bit more major. And so I may or may not need or want to use subject properties over here. They may not be um, what this neighborhood is trending at. So now that I've got a mile radius kind of in my head, I tend to go right where the subject property is and then expand out if I need to be, if I need to. So I'm going to delete that guy. And I want to stay within some of the major street boundaries and simply hit count. And so there's four found. So we dialed it in pretty well as far as the subject property in this neighborhood who is right around 2,000 square feet, right with, with around two beds and two baths, two car garages. So let's take a look at what we have and see if we need to tweak our search at all. All right. So you can see here, there's a range of anything between 385, 400, and 412, and 420. So the other thing that I noticed right off the rip is that I'm only pulling sold property. So it's kind of odd that there's nothing for sale, and there's kind of odd that there's nothing uh, pending in there. So I may have mistyped something here. I've got actives, active backup, pending, sold. Okay, so everything appears to be right. However, we are in the early months of the year. Maybe there hasn't been that amount of activity. So let's, let's start first by moving our date back. So now there's eight found. So count, search. Again, everything sold. So that it's making me question things a little more, but it could be our criteria. Uh, but based upon what I'm seeing here is if you price this home anywhere between 370 and 420 in that particular you know, area or subdivision, it looks like there's a couple different subdivisions, Metal Lark as well as Horizon West. Um, but it seems like if you price your home in that area, um, you're going to be doing just fine. However, the question is, is why in the world are some all the way down to 370 and why are some all the way up to 420? That's, you know, a $50,000 range. Let's narrow this in. Um, so we need to find something that's close to what our subject property is. So we know we have a three bed, two bath. So there's only one that's a three bed, two bath. So right off the rip, this guy hits the majority of what we're looking for. However, we got to look at square foot as well. So let me pause for a minute. Let me explain some things or just connect some dots. An appraiser is not perfect. The comps you pull are not going to be perfect. You're looking for a range. You're looking for your seller to tell you where they'd like to list the home. You're looking for a range in which you know if they listed it in that range, it very well could sell. If it's at the top of the range, it could take a little longer. If it's at the bottom of the range, you're probably likely to sell it very quickly. Again, it's up to the seller where they describe it, and it's for you to present information to them. But I do think for the purposes of this video, $50,000 is, is, is quite a big range. Let's try and narrow this down to somewhere along the lines of twenty to 30000 So we again, we said um, three bed, two bath. I like this one because it is just that. Um, it's, it's definitely on the low end of our square foot. Uh, again, we're looking at 2000 just as a subject property. So it's on the lower end, but for right now, I like it. The next one, I'm going to go down. Three beds, three bath. The rest are just like that. So I, I kind of have to almost get comfortable with that and, and say, okay. Square foot is getting better. And so what this is telling me here is maybe maybe the square foot is, drive, is bringing more money, or maybe it's the extra bathroom that's bringing me more money. Those are the only two kind of conclusions I can tell after comparing just those two. 
Next, we're going to look at 1869. It has three bed, three bath, 22nd Ave for 385. So there's not a heck of a lot of difference between these two guys here. You have 1894, 1400 without basement, 1400 without basement, 1869 total, three bed, three bath. So this may be more in a direct line of where we might be. Maybe this is a little low. Maybe this sold um, uh, further back in time. Uh, we'll take a look at some of those as we go. But right now, what I'd like to do is I like to just try to analyze anything that we might be able to just go ahead and get rid of as far as our comp holes go. And traditionally speaking, we're getting rid of this this bottom one, and we're probably getting rid of more of what I would consider maybe an anomaly or something that just doesn't fit. So this one has is on the extreme end of our square foot at 2300. So uh, because they're all three bed, three bath, what I would do is I go through each one of these and ask myself all of these questions. For the time constraints with this video, um, I can tell you that I would probably conclude that I need to be closer to my square foot and see kind of where everything goes as far as price with that. So I'm looking for anything that's the closest to 2,000 square foot. And then, yeah, you have some other ones that are very, very close. So let's compare the ones in 18 with 1,800 square foot as well. And yeah, it pretty much happens this way a majority of the time. Usually your, your lower end and your higher end comps, they have a piece of criteria that's kind of just glaring at you. To, to say remove me. Um, but we need to keep those in there for our base search. I like to keep those in there for our base search because we could have pulled this, this search and had a completely different experience. All of these properties, we could have had half around the 1700 square foot area and we could have had the other half around the 2300 square foot area. Again, it's all about playing with what you have and the metrics that you have. So I wanna run through two through seven here. And I want to kind of take now, just kind of take a look at some photos. So to refresh and to have this populate instead of one through eight, I want this to say one through six, since we're eliminating those other two, you can hit this refresh button. And now you can see it here. So just briefly scanning through, now I'm just going to look at a, a quick run through of condition. I now want to kind of get a little judgy, if you will, with these homes. So Quickly running through, exterior paint looks looks fresh. I can't tell, but I don't see any chipping. I don't see any wear and tear. It's hard to tell whether the roof is new, but the landscaping looks looks mildly taken care of. This was you know sold in the fall. We've got some grass that probably is alive, but maybe dormant. Um, inside, it looks a little stark. It doesn't look like they have a lot of decorating features, which is kind of nice, and it helps me kind of see some things for what the home is really is. Um, going through it, looks like there's a, a quick living room right off the front door. Anyways, these are all things I'm, I'm telling myself as I scan through here. So again, for the purposes of this video, I'm going to run through here and say this home is looks pretty fresh and kept, but no major outstanding updates, nothing that would cause this thing to just blow someone's mind. But again, it is kept. Finished basement, washroom, well lit. Looks like a decent sized backyard, but this photo I, I imagine is pretty deceiving as it only has a 0.14 acre lot. So good, subject, subject number one, just to get a base. Then I would go through number two. Looks like a very similar model. Again, living room right off the front door, this time around hardwood floors, just hardwood. Uh, you know, value more than carpet. Uh, I think it really depends upon the appraiser. I would say that it has a slight advantage just in that the appraisers know it costs more to put in and uh, the longevity of hardwood can be longer if you, if you, if you do it. But ultimately, an appraiser is going to tell you it's, it's flooring. I think we have the exact same subject house. So very good. We're at 377 to 385. Um, in this situation, who knows? This could be the hardwood that, that brought the that brought more money, um, or it could be the time frame. So this one sold uh, 410 of this year, and this one sold, yeah, in November. So they, there you have it. If this one sold in April of this year, 
it very well may have drawn uh, 385. You just never know. Very similar layout, maybe a mirror image. Again, the tri-level situation looks very similar and sold for 398. So as you can see, you have three very similar properties, three of which have sold in three very you know different price points. You have, uh, what is this, $8,000 eight difference here. You have another, let's call it about $13,000 difference here, all for a very similar house, all for the same neighborhood, um, all with very similar features. I don't see any one of these that is just stand out, stand out. So this is a very good example, and I'm, I'm glad we came across this in this video. Um, the seller's not going to be wrong pricing it at 380. But they're also not going to be wrong pricing it at 400. The biggest thing to note here is that we have no competition. We are literally looking for active sales in that neighborhood, and we have no competition. So I would continue on with this. I would say that my gut is telling me price this thing right around 400 and see what happens. But we really want to see what the, what the neighborhood is doing. So this is what I would use for a CMA. But I, I got to tell my sellers. I got to show my sellers what kind of competition we're looking at out there. So in a roundabout way, I would take these listings here. I like to click on this button, Cloud CMA, create a Cloud CMA report. It's going to bring you to this website here. If you're an Iris member, you already have this for free. If you're clicking on that button for the first time, it probably is going to ask you to sign up. If not, your screen is going to look like this. And you're going to type your name, Bob and Joy, subject property address, one, two, one, two, three, test. Uh, you could type in the bedrooms, the bath, square foot. Add a property uh, cover if you'd want. Um, you know, fill in as much detail as you can. These privacy notes, again, they don't appear in the report, so this is more for you. Now, what you're going to see here is is it pulled all of those MLS numbers that we had, and you can go here and fetch listings. The other thing that you can do if you just want, if somebody just wants a very quick CMA, you can get down and dirty, and you can just pull the first ten listings that are nearest to the property. I don't like this one as it doesn't go through and ask some of those questions that we just asked. But if you do need something just quick and on the fly, um, you can jump in here real quick and pull it this way. But for the purpose of this video, um, let's, let's do this the right way. Let's use our subject properties that we just worked on. Fetch our listing. And now you're going to see here, it's going to pull all those six homes going to pull up a map of where those homes are located. Looks like there's one that maybe got um, mapped out wrong. Um, you may see that from time to time. So it looks like it's showing me a house here. Oh, no, I'm sorry. This is my subject house. It's pulling me all the way down to Colorado Springs because of what I typed in. I uh, apologize for that. But if you zoom in here, it's going to basically show you where you found all those properties. So when you're talking with your seller, you can show them that um, you know, there's three right around where we pointed to on the map. Those are probably going to be more indicative of where things will sell. Uh, but what it's going to do is run through here. You can deselect things if you decided that maybe one of these needs to be eliminated. It's going to show you your median, your average. So again, right around that 400 is right where my gut went. Customize report. Ooh, looks like a new feature. So. Go ahead and try it out. Um, I'm going to say not now for purposes of this video. And your CMA report will, will basically publish here. But this is where you get to edit some things. Um, I have already gone through this Cloud CMA and decided what I do and do not want to add. So this is everything that I add. And you're going to notice this little button over here that's going to ask you if you want to keep it or, or um, delete it. Um, if you want to delete it, you're going to click on that. Um, I have created my own template for how I like to publish my reports. So you can do this through the back end. Um, I can't 
exactly remember right now, but I think if you go over here and mess with around with your profile, you can customize how you'd like that to pull. Hit publish report. And then what you're going to notice here is there's two options now. You're going to be able to view a PDF version or view a slideshow. Depending upon how you want to run your business, both of these can be um, the, both of these options can be for you. I absolutely use both because it depends upon what type of person I'm dealing with. Some people want to see the PDF version. They just want to go through. They want to scan through. They don't want any issues. Uh, PDF to somebody, they, they think they think booklet. They think paper. They think uh, I know how to navigate through this. It's just page by page. This is what you will develop. Again, your map's going to look a little different. I apologize. Usually it's a pretty zoomed in version of what we just showed you. Um, I think it's just because of the test property that I put in. It's going to show you all your subject property. It's going to allow any of the detailed people out there to really go through all of the specs. It's going to allow the visual people to come through and see all of the photos. And so it, it's kind of going through one at a time. The first page is the description in the front view. Second page is your photos. And then you have um, another property and another property. It just keeps going until you get down past all of your comparables and all your solds. Anyways, read through this. Make sure you understand what you're presenting to somebody. Take out what you're not going to use. There's a lot of information here. Um, I like to use a CMA that hits all of the profiles that are out there. I'm a heavy user of the disk profile, and I have uh, pieces in here that hits uh, all sorts. So high I, high D, high S, high C, you name it. Okay, going back, you can also view a slideshow. Slideshow is kind of interactive. This may be if you you know meeting up with somebody and take your computer over to them. Um, somebody who is is pretty tech savvy. They they kind of like this view. You're gonna see your command central over here. So you can go home at any time, which will take you back to this page, or you can use these arrows here. What you're gonna notice about these arrows is they start to go left and right, and then once you end up going to a sold property, you're gonna notice now you can tab down through those different photos. So you always know you're on the same listing going up and down. And as soon as you hit the right tab again, now you're on a new property and now you can see all the details of just that property there. So again, features for any and all types of personalities. Traditionally speaking, you're gonna be reviewing this with them at their property or at their house. If you must send this to them, if you're calling around circle prospecting, promising free CMAs, and you just have that person that just doesn't want to meet up with you in person, you can email the reports to them. You can copy these links and send it to them. Um, I, for one, encourage you guys absolutely to meet with them in person. And that's about it. If you have any questions, again, let me know. If you're looking at this, uh, running a comp poll for your buyers, you should have stopped probably a long time ago at the um, CMA button. Let me go back to that, if you will. So that button is, again, down here once you have all of your, your specs. Um, if for some other reason you, know, you weren't finding what you were looking for, make sure that you're going back through the MLS and, and understanding that it's okay to tweak this to four bedrooms. It's okay to eliminate some of this, this um, square footage criteria. So that's it for this video as far as the, the comparative market analysis goes. But I did promise you one thing. When you're doing this and you're looking up these sold properties for your seller, make sure you go into your listing with um, an idea around what's active in that neighborhood. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of most of this search. I already know, I, I've already seen all the solds. I want to know what's active, what's backup, and what's pending and sold in that neighborhood. And um, really see what's what's going on over there map search should be the same all right so there's three active why didn't they pull because their total square foot is is not around where i want it to be this one here should have very well pulled 2000 square foot 
bedrooms, bathrooms, 23rd Avenue. And so what I would do here is I'd, di I'd dive into this listing and I would try and figure out why exactly it didn't pull in my search the first time around. There may be something that the uh, listing agent uh, maybe input inputted incorrectly. Could be something that I inputted incorrectly on the search uh, now that I got rid of a few things. So anyways, there you have it. Any other questions, please reach out. Have a great day.